Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey is one of the greatest video games ever made. It had some fantastic turn-based gameplay, fun and complex dungeon crawling, and a thought-provoking story with themes that could serve as a basis for hours worth of discussion. Truly a one-of-a-kind experience, and one that's worthy of being called a masterpiece. While not the most popular JRPG in the genre, Strange Journey is a game well-respected by critics and fans alike. Hell, I even just made a video going in-depth with everything the game has to offer, and came out very satisfied. However, there was something that I decided not to talk about in that video. Not out of neglect or anything, but because I feel as though this topic is worthy of its own video. Strange Journey was initially released back in 2009, exclusively for the Nintendo DS. But, just like every other Atlas game from that era, it would eventually be given new life in the form of an enhanced port. Strange Journey Redux was released in 2018 for the Nintendo 3DS to coincide with the 25th anniversary of the Shin Megami Tensei series. I I always found it kind of odd that they chose this title of all things to be their big celebration of that event. You would assume that they'd capitalize on the hype and release a new game, but they didn't. It kind of makes sense in retrospect, since SMT5 didn't release until like three years later, so in the meantime, they probably just said, fuck it, and squirted this one out. Funny that this wouldn't be the last time an Atlas celebration would end with a remaster rather than a new game, but in a way it's worse since those versions of these games were just raw ports without any extra features. And in P5's case, they actually took away stuff. Can you believe that shit? Anyway, Redux is marketed as the definitive way to experience Strange Journey, and when looking at it on the surface, Surface, it seems to be no different than any other Atlas re-release at the time. Updated visuals, rebalanced gameplay, additional content, the works. If you're new to the SMT series and are looking to get into Strange Journey, then this might sound like a great deal on paper. Get this cult classic game with even more content on top of that, sign me up. But the thing is, the devil is in the details. Longtime viewers of this channel might remember that I don't exactly have the nicest things to say about Atlas re-releases. Hell, I even dedicated a video to the topic last year. The core issue of these definitive versions Atlas puts out isn't that they change a few things, it's that the changes themselves have a massive impact on the overall experience, and Strange Journey Redux is the poster child of this issue. This is the game that I think of whenever the topic of these re-releases come up, and in today's video, I'm going to explain why Strange Journey Redux is a a terrible way to experience the game. But before we get into it, there are a few things that I want to say first. To get this right out of the way, I'm not here to rain on anyone's parade. There are plenty of people out there that really enjoy Strange Journey Redux and the additions it brings to the table. And you know what? That's totally fair. I'm not setting out on a mission to invalidate anyone's experience or say that they're wrong for liking a video game, because that's stupid and petty. I ran a poll on my channel recently asking for people's thoughts, and clearly many of my viewers do enjoy this game, and if you're a part of that group, then more power to you. But I can't say that I'm a fan for a myriad of reasons. I'm also going to be making the assumption here that you've either played one version of Strange Journey, or have at least seen my video on the original game. This is mostly to save time so I don't have to re-explain anything, and just focus solely on what Redux changes. Oh yeah, also there's going to be spoilers, so don't say that I didn't warn you. Strange Journey Redux alters a lot about the original game. In fact, nearly every facet of the experience has seen some changes in some form or fashion. Let's start with the small complaints before making our way up to the major problems. I think we should start with the most obvious one, the updated presentation. Strange Journey saw a pretty massive facelift when it made the jump to the 3DS, more so than pretty much any other re-release in the franchise. Of course, we got some of the expected visual improvements, like a wider aspect ratio and improved particle effects, along with a few smaller visual changes. The game looks a lot more vibrant now, which isn't my cup of tea. I prefer the moodier color palette of the original game. I also like the UI in the original way more, both in terms of form and function. Strange Journey Redux alters the game's HUD to be more reminiscent of SMT4's, in fact, it's an exact copy of it. I've never been a huge fan of the HUD used in SMT4 since, in battle, it divides important information across both the top and bottom screens. Either I constantly dart my eyes up and down, or I go cross-eyed to see everything. It also just makes these games a major pain in the ass to record. Like, you can't just exclude the bottom screen 
because of how important it is. So either use a garish border or you do what I do and just awkwardly plop it in the corner. It looks like ass and it's gonna make these games way harder to port in the future because of it. Like how would you make this look good on one screen without redesigning the whole thing? I only complain about this because the HUD in the original game is great. Everything you need to know is all on one screen, with the bottom screen being used for the map and other menu options. It's clean and easy to read, while also having some fun stylization. If Redux included an option to use the HUD from the original game, then this wouldn't be an issue but there isn't one, which means you have to put up with this crappy dual screen setup. However, when you're talking about major artistic changes relating to Strange Journey Redux, the HUD is the least of your concerns. One of the most infamous changes is the updated character portraits. Unlike the original game, Redux features portraits for every character in the game. This is a pretty good idea. It helps the player become more attached to the characters since they're able to put a face to their names. But the issue that people take with these portraits is that already existing characters Characters needed to be redesigned for visual consistency. The artwork in the OG Strange Journey had a very western feel to it. The characters looked very rough and detailed. The artwork in Redux goes for a more traditional Japanese look, which is fine, but ends up creating a less unique artistic flair compared to the other games in the series. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of this artwork, not just because it lacks a distinct identity, but because I feel as though the compositions themselves are just weaker than Kaneko's work overall. Jimenez is the biggest example of this. His his Redux design ages him down significantly, and he lacks a lot of the fine detail from his original design. His hair also looks painted on rather than being a natural part of his body. While it's admirable that the extra crew members got new portraits, the designs they ended up going with aren't the most inspired. These characters look like something you'd get out of a create your own Strange Journey character than anything. And the faces aren't the most flattering. Terry looks like he was just diagnosed with AIDS, and they made Captain Jack the most obviously evil man in existence. Look, I'm not one of those people that think this artwork ruins the game or anything, because it really doesn't. Sure, it doesn't look as unique, but saying Redux is bad solely because of the art would be a pretty shallow reason for not liking it. You can have a preference, but people saying that this ruins the game are overreacting. I got used to it fairly quickly, but it's an undeniable downgrade in my eyes. At the very least, the environment design stayed intact, which to me is far more important to the experience than how the characters look. Where Strange Journey Redux really starts to falter, however, is in the changes made to the gameplay. On the outside looking in, Redux looks to be nearly identical to the original release, and for the first few hours, this is true. The game is still a first-person dungeon crawler, with a combat system that emphasizes the importance of team composition. While not as complex or as flexible as press turn from the other games, the demon co-op system puts a fun spin on old mechanics, which gives Strange Journey a unique identity. I find the original Strange Journey to be a very well-balanced game overall. It doesn't suffer from the issues that some of the other games do, where it starts off challenging, only to become easier as you go along. The designers had the foresight to ramp up the challenge as you come to grips with the game's rules, and they throw in some curve balls to put that knowledge to the test. However, I can't give Redux the same credit for quite a few reasons. Sure, the game uses the same basic skeleton, but the changes and additions brought with this version of the game work to detract from the experience more than anything. The main cause of this is the reworked app system. The apps in the original Strange Journey were pretty fun. They provide passive buffs to the player, but needed to be manually managed to get the most out of them. This was done not only to keep the game balanced, but also to provide players with a constant source of meaningful decision making. While apps still exist in Redux and fundamentally serve the same purpose, app points have been completely gutted. Apps now serve as static upgrades, since you're able to equip as many as you want without any worry. The only limitation is that you're not allowed to equip apps that contradict each other, but there are barely any that do that anyways, so who cares? The idea that the app system needed to be streamlined is a flawed one. The limitations that came with the app system in the original game were integral. You only have a certain number of app points in your budget, and some of the most desirable apps cost a pretty penny to equip. There's no option to build some ultimate loadout, since you're always at the mercy of the app point limit. It's what keeps this system interesting throughout the game, as no app truly becomes obsolete. Sometimes you'd be better off equipping a weaker version of an app so you can afford some of the more powerful ones, like NP regeneration. The app point restrictions were a deliberate decision, and not a choice made to arbitrarily make the game more difficult. I'm not saying that it's better in the original because it's difficult, rather, it's better because it's more interesting. In Strange Journey Redux, 
apps are now just binary upgrades. You buy an app, flip it on, and never think about it again. No thought needs to go into this. If you've got the cash, then you're set. It's the worst kind of upgrade. God forbid you ask the player to consider the consequences and strategies in a game meant to be challenging. But this isn't even the worst part about the new app system. A common piece of criticism with the original Strange Journey is that the protagonist was pretty useless in combat, and it's hard not to agree with this. His skill selection did less damage and cost him more MP to cast than the other characters in the game. He doesn't get much to make up for that either, aside from a couple of almighty moves that are pretty decent. Redux attempts to fix this through the introduction of commander skills, but their execution is all over the place. This is an idea that, on paper, sounds right up my alley. Commander skills are the protagonist's exclusive abilities that can be activated on his turn. You can raise the attack of your demons for one turn, protect everyone from ailments, and even grant the party endure. I think this is a good way to separate the protagonist from the other ones on the series. In previous SMT games, the protagonist is usually this long-term investment character, starting off as someone weak and eventually transforming into the strongest party member. Since the protagonist of Strange Journey is just a regular guy, the developers instead opt to have him take a more supportive role. Rather than dealing damage directly, you instead hang out in the back and make your demons more effective in battle. Sure, you can jump in with your own attacks still, but the protagonist this time around is a more defensive fighter rather than the head honcho. It's a fun way of implementing his background as a trained soldier into the gameplay. Obviously, he'd know how to work well with his comrades due to his profession, so no better way to show that than make him the commander of an army. It's a great idea on paper, but the shitty thing about commander skills is how exactly they were implemented into the game. My main sticking point is that commander skills don't cost any resources to use. Rather, they function off of Ugh, cooldown timers. Every time you use a commander skill, you have to wait a certain number of turns to activate it again. The amount of turns varies depending on the skill, and the current status carries over between fights. There's not much skill or strategy that goes into using these skills. You either use the skill, or you don't. Sure, I can think of some cases where you can implement a commander skill into combos or something, but most of the time, you'd be better off just casting them right away. There's no reason not to, since it'll recharge after a few turns anyway. I would have vastly preferred if these skills took MP to cast or drew from a third resource instead. That way, it could be more easily planned around and offer more strategy. Almost like a video game or something. But this isn't even compared to the auto commander skills, which are just outright a bad addition. Not only are these skills completely free, but they have a random chance of activating every turn. There's no strategy to be had with these skills. It's not something that you can take advantage of. Rather, it's up to the game to decide if you get these bonus benefits, which makes the whole system feel hollow to me. I just can't get over how strong some of these effects are. You just get free luster candies, and there's no way you can convince me that this is balanced in any way. In a game all about resource management and strategy, including a mechanic that doesn't revolve around those ideas make it feel out of place. Commander skills, while a good concept in theory, are ultimately detrimental since they ruin the game's balance. This implies to the entirety of the reworked app system. In an attempt to make the game more accessible, a lot of the edge and challenge that made the original game unique was sanded off. It might sound like I'm overreacting, but seriously, play these games back to back and the difference is night and day. The app system is a huge part of Strange Journey, and by changing it as much as they did, it greatly alters the experience. And no, playing on hard mode doesn't make it any better. All this does is adjust a few numbers. Enemies hitting harder doesn't magically fix the app system. It's still less interesting at its core, and the new apps aren't exactly what I'd call great. But hey, an addition I actually don't mind all too much is the new dungeon. The Womb of Grief is Redux's version of the Labyrinth of Amala from SMT Nocturne. I love the dungeons in the original Strange Journey, so I'm not going to complain about getting more of these. And you know what? This dungeon isn't all that bad. Sure, it suffers a lot from New Edition Syndrome, where you can tell that this is content that didn't exist in the original version of the game, but I think it's a fine piece of content in its own right. The biggest complaint I have with it though, is just how similar it is to the Amala Labyrinth. To the point where it feels more like a homage rather than a wholly original idea. Think about it for a second. Both of these are dungeons that are unlocked early on in the journey, and are divided up into distinct blocks, with more floors unlocking as you progress through the main story. There are exclusive bosses tied to this dungeon, the third floor features a set piece where you're being hunted by the main additional character, and new endings are locked behind completing this dungeon. While the Womb of Grief obviously plays very differently thanks to the different engine, a lot of the same broad strokes are repeated, and are oftentimes done worse. 
The Alex Chase in the third area is a prime example of this. It's got nothing on the Dante Hunt from Nocturne. That game has the benefit of being fully 3D. You get to see Dante hunt you down. He takes shots to slow you down, and is an active obstacle to avoid when solving puzzles. Redux's more limited visuals and tile-based movement don't work all too well for set pieces like this. Alex essentially acts as an invisible wall, since she only catches you if you step on a specific tile. It's significantly lamer as a result, and is a prime example of ambition versus hardware. The Womb of Grief isn't a bad dungeon at all, it just lacks a unique identity to call its own. It's a feeling that I just couldn't shake while playing through it. This new dungeon is cool and all, but a lot of this is stuff that's been done better already, whether that be reused gimmicks from the other dungeons, or were just ideas done better in the other games. Something that I can compliment about the Womb of Grief, however, are the new bosses. These are actually pretty good fights. These bosses have some punishing exclusive skills to keep you on your toes, and end up testing you in different ways. If you were to ask me, the Womb of Grief is worth going through exclusively for these boss fights, because let me tell you, it sure as hell isn't the story additions that'll get you interested. Okay, so Strange Journey Redux, just like the other releases before it, includes brand new story content. In Redux's case, this is in the form of a brand new set of endings tied to the new character, Alex. She makes sporadic appearances throughout the game, with her initial goal seeming to kill the protagonist alongside Zelenin and Jimenez. In fact, it's through your first near-death encounter with Alex that you unlock the Womb of Grief dungeon. While Alex shows up a few times throughout the story, the main meat of her character lies deep in the depths of the new dungeon. And strap in, because this one's a doozy. Alex's true nature is shrouded in mystery for the majority of the game. She's presented as a cold and calculated killer, and while her motivations aren't initially clear, you'll be able to quickly piece two and two together. To put it simply, Alex is a time traveler. Every ending in the original Strange Journey came with grim implications for the rest of humanity, whether that be the chaos ending survival of the fittest mindset, the hive mind of the law ending, or the stagnation of the neutral route. Alex is one of the sole survivors of those endings, and gained the power to travel through time thanks to her heritage. She's fucking Silver the Hedgehog, basically, and plans on killing the protagonist in order to ensure a better future for mankind. But, as the game goes on, Alex realizes that the protagonist isn't an evil person, and is actually someone who can be reasoned with. If you manage to complete the Womb of Grief before fighting the final boss, Alex confronts you one last time. If you're on the Law or Chaos route, she explains to the representative the flaws of their current ideals, and how they ended up causing more harm than good. But if you're on the neutral route, Alex explains that destroying the Schwarzfeld is in vain. Humanity will grow stagnant, seeing the Schwarzfeld's destruction as an excuse to remain the way they are. After explaining this situation, Alex offers an ultimatum. Either listen to her warnings and try to change the future, or fight back against her and essentially doom mankind. So, the new endings. I don't like them. I do not like them one bit. And I know that this might sound a bit confusing to some people, because, on the surface, these endings are great. Everything that you can think of that's wrong with the original has been fixed. The law ending sees all demonic influence getting eradicated, but allows humans to keep their individuality. The chaos ending returns humans to a more primal state of being, but demons now serve as mankind's guardians. And neutral as the protagonists become an immortal being watching over the current world, suiting up and venturing back into the Schwarzfeld whenever it reappears. How could something so good be a bad thing? Well, that's the thing. It's because these solutions are so heavily idealized that I don't like them. The new endings in Strange Journey Redux lack the consequences the original ones have. And consequences is at the foundation of the alignment system. You're meant to weigh up the pros and cons that come with these story choices. Consider all possible implications that come with a world of absolute freedom and one of order. These new endings lack any bite or texture. There's no nuance or discussion to be had since all of them are such perfect outcomes. No need to worry about the lack of free will, humans killing each other, or the Schwarzfeld's inevitable return. It's significantly less interesting, and kinda goes against the consistent theme seen throughout the game. Not every story needs a happy ending for it to be considered good, and the original Strange Journey is a prime example of this. I know that if I really want to get the old endings, then there is an option to do so. But the thing is, these outcomes are permanently tainted. Alex's mere existence is proof of that. Redux is essentially treating the old outcomes as objectively bad endings, and what you should really be going for are the new ones, which kinda comes off as disrespectful to me. 
When looking at the game's credits, I noticed that none of the old staff came back to work on the new scenario. This isn't a personal attack on the people who worked on this version of the game, since they're obviously very talented, but it feels as though the new blood sort of missed the point of the original story. I'm also not a huge fan of how Redux's new story content works to fundamentally alter the developer's original vision. I don't know, maybe there's some hidden design document out there that mentions time travel in relation to this game. When you break it down, Strange Journey Redux offers a very different experience from the original game. This isn't inherently a bad thing. There are a couple of games out there that, when re-released, tend to make some pretty substantial changes. Square Enix games are a perfect example of this. But the main difference is that when something like Kingdom Hearts 2 gets a re-release, it doesn't fundamentally alter the original game. Plus in that game's case, the changes made improve the experience, not make it worse. In a way, I do appreciate the ambition behind these enhanced ports that Atlas turns out. There's extra effort put in to make the experience feel fresh and distinguished from the vanilla release, and I can think of one or two times where this produces a superior final product. But the thing is, for the vast majority of the time, these versions of the games end up feeling inferior to me. Strange Journey Redux embodies all of this. I know I'm being a bit overdramatic because at its core, Redux is still Strange Journey. It's just a different enough take that it's worth calling those changes into question. If everything good I have to say about this game stems from the original, and the source of all my problems are with the changes Redux brought, then I think I can get away with saying that it's a downgrade. Maybe there are one or two quality of life updates that I enjoy, but it's not enough to make up for how much this version tramples on the original. It's not even like all the changes can be ignored either, since they're hard baked into the combat now. But if I have to go out of my way to capture a similar experience than the original, then at that point, I may as well just play the DS version. The only benefit that I could give Redux was that it was easily accessible in comparison, but now that we live in a post eShop world, and physical copies continue to rise in price, I can't even give it that anymore. If you haven't played Strange Journey yet and are looking to get into the game, then I honestly suggest you play the original version instead. Once you've had your fill and are curious, then I think you should jump into Redux. Who knows, you might even end up liking it more than I did. But if you were to ask me, nothing tops the original. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. I'd like to give a special shout out to all of my channel supporters whose names are on screen now. It's because of these lovely people that I'm able to make videos at the pace I do currently. These videos take a while to make, so if you're all interested in helping out and donating, you can do so through my Patreon or channel memberships. I have a few things I can offer in return, such as early video access, a special Discord role, and even some behind the scenes content on occasion. Every donation helps, and if the words I mentioned sound interesting to you, then you can find out more by following the links in the description. I've got a feeling that I made a lot of enemies through this video. This is like one of the only times where my opinion on something is so drastically in the minority that I wouldn't be surprised if this video ends up being one of my more controversial ones. I don't really go into these things seeking validation, but clearly this one's an uphill battle for me. Again, I'm not trying to tell you you're wrong for liking Redux, but this version has bothered me for a while, and I really needed to get it off my chest. In terms of future projects, I have a couple of things planned. The Persona 3 challenge run I made a few months ago ended up doing a lot better than I expected, so I've decided to do the same type of challenge for Persona 4. Once again, it'll be a no protagonist run where I rely only on the AI controlled party members, and one of my friends suggested that I play the PS2 version instead, which I thought was a pretty good idea. It would be a good way to spice it up since everyone plays golden for these kind of videos, and not many people show off the vanilla release, and it's so drastically different at the end of the day, I think it'd be cool to highlight those differences as well as do the challenge run like normal. If you want to stay up to date with that and other future projects, then be sure to follow my Twitter and join my Discord server. Both will be linked in the description. Once again, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time.